Whether the honeybees like it or not, nature has made them into real hard workers. Every single hive is like a big, busy corporation, where every single bee has a special role to play. Some of them gather pollen and nectar. Others make honey and maintain the temperature of the hive. The queen bee is a little like the CEO. Her main responsibility is to be the mother for all the bees in the hive. With so much to do, bees don't have holidays or weekends. Having kids is no easy task for emperor penguins. The female penguin first lays a single egg after a long journey. She can travel up to 50 miles to reach a suitable place. She then hands the egg over to the male penguin and goes out into the sea to feed. The male keeps the egg nice and warm. In fact, the caring dad incubates the egg for around 64 days. Hey, it's Mr. Mom! He may even take care of the baby in the first few days after it hatches until its mom arrives with some food. It's then the male's turn to go feed for a few weeks in the sea. The two penguins will keep on swapping between childcare and foraging for food until the chick becomes independent. Earthworms spend their entire lives making tunnels in the soil. Farmers should really thank these busy guys for their underground activities, because the tunnels the earthworms build help to enrich the soil with air and water. The worms also help the plants, providing them with minerals in the form of nutrients from the soil. So, these simple creatures are really doing an important job. But it sure is hard work for the earthworms themselves. Can you dig it? Some might say that termites are a homeowner's worst nightmare. But these demolition experts are really useful in the wild. The insects can eat through old wood and turn it into rich soil. Inside their enormous colonies, the termites are divided into groups, with each one performing its own special job. As with bees, the termite queen gives birth to the offspring for the entire colony. But the worker termites are perhaps the busiest. They collect food, care for offspring, and build up the nest. They're the only kind of termite able to turn cellulose into food, which is why they feed all the other termites. Hey, say hello to the doctor of the sea! Cleaner Rossi fish are quite small, but they do a huge amount of work. They remove harmful parasites from other sea creatures, including both fish and reefs. The cleaner Rossi even get rid of the parasites on really large fish, which is actually a brave thing to do because the big creatures are a real danger to them. Luckily for the cleaner Rossis, though, the predators value their medical services more than their taste. Uh, don't eat me, please. Don't eat me. Hey, thanks. Cleaner Rossis work tirelessly at their task day and night, and they do a really good job. Studies show that the reefs become much healthier after they've been cleaned. The diversity of fish is also greater in areas inhabited by cleaner Rossis. Of course, they're not doing all of this out of generosity. The parasites are food for the Rossis, so doing their job is basically the same thing as visiting a restaurant. <laughs> that sounds like a win-win situation. Male bowerbirds have a unique talent. They design their own nests. Ok, all birds build nests, but only bowerbirds decorate them with flowers, shells, and colorful pebbles. All this beauty isn't just for their own enjoyment, though. Male bowerbirds use their design skills to attract females to their luxurious homes. Hey babe, wanna check out my pad? The birds also perform a courtship dance. Since competition is steep, bowerbirds really do their best to impress a potential partner. So that's what? Bowerbird bling? Though lions are often called the king of the jungle, it's actually the lionesses who do all the real work. While the male's job is to protect their families, the females are busy both raising the young and getting food for all the members of the pride. And this truly is hard work. The average male lion needs around 15 pounds of meat a day. So, the females do the majority of the hunting, although they're actually smaller and less powerful than the males. But lionesses have one particular advantage here. They can run about 30% faster than lions. And that's where we draw the lion. Here are nature's engineers, beavers. These long-toothed mammals are very serious about their homes. First, the beavers build dams, special barriers to protect them from predators. 
The dams are usually made of mud, stone, and timber. The beavers gnaw a tree at its trunk, then break the wood down into smaller pieces and carry it between their teeth. They're prepared to repeat the job if necessary. If their dam gets destroyed, beavers can rebuild it overnight. When all is ready, the eager beavers start to build their homes, which are called lodges. These are really sophisticated buildings with vents, underwater entrances, and a feeding chamber where they stock wood to eat during the winter. Well, now I understand why they say busy as a beaver. Ants have a reputation for being the most hard-working creatures in the world. Their strict social organization and division of labor makes them incredibly successful when they work together. Ants live almost everywhere on Earth, except for Antarctica and a few remote islands. The numbers speak for themselves. Ants could make up for as much as 15 to 25 percent of all living things on dry land. But despite just how busy ant colonies seem to be, some of the little critters actually do take a break now and then. Scientists once observed the behavior of several hundred ants from five different colonies. The results show that around 40% were busy, doing nothing. They divided the ants into four groups. Walkers, individuals that spend most of the time wandering around the anthill. Foragers, those who perform tasks outside the nest. Nurses, who specialize in caring for the young. And finally, the inactive, lazy individuals. Ants are real experts at being lazy. But the most amazing thing about these slackers is that they're actually doing the right thing. They're a reserve labor force. If the ant colony loses its active workers, it can replace them with the inactive guys right away. So it seems we can hardly call ourselves the most hardworking species on Earth. In fact, as if they didn't have enough to do, there are plenty of animals that can help us perform our jobs better. Therapy dogs provide some much-needed affection to people in hospitals and nursing homes. They can also help patients or elderly people to participate in physical activity and even educate children. Any size or breed of dog can become a therapy dog, but they should have the right temperament and good socializing skills. Detection dogs or sniffer dogs have been around since the Middle Ages. Nowadays, their primary role is to detect dangerous odors, illegal currency, and electronic devices. Detection dogs can also help biologists because they can be trained to discover certain animal species in the wild. Sniffer dogs are also employed in the medical industry. They can detect specific odors associated with certain medical conditions. In the future, it might be possible to train dogs to work out if someone has a fever. But dogs aren't the only animals that help us in our work. Elephants are another example. Indian elephants are still widely used for various jobs, especially in the jungle. These animals are capable of carrying heavy loads up to 20,000 pounds, which is the weight of 130 adult human beings. Elephants can carry heavy tree trunks and perform complex tasks, like stacking logs in a certain order, loading and unloading barges, and pulling trees out of deep water. These incredible animals can learn over 30 commands. But if you now think all animals are more productive than us, don't worry, there are plenty more that prefer to lie around not doing anything at all. Koalas are one of the laziest species on the planet. They spend most of their lives hanging on to the crowns of eucalyptus trees. Koalas can actually run and even swim, but normally they move only when necessary sleeping for up to 20 hours a day. In the rare moments when koalas are awake, they simply sit motionless, clutching a branch with their paws. It's their diet that makes them such lazy bones. The leaves of eucalyptus trees are not the most high-calorie food out there. Hmm, maybe they should be drinking koala cola or something.